What's up? Creeper Sand Keekers, Chris, the Atari Creep. How is everyone doing today? Welcome back to the Million Macabre. We're going to start building on a face hugger. Um, Mike of the Irmo Custom Models was generous enough to, to, to uh, pass this on to me. I guess he had had it in his collection and doesn't foresee himself building it anytime soon, nor does he see something like this fitting in with his collectibles room. And look at the size of the kit. I don't blame him for not trying to find a spot for it in his home. So, Mike, thank, again, thank you so much, bud. I know we've talked a lot about it. You're probably sick of hearing me say thank you, but since I'm talking about it, I have to still say thank you. So let's have a look at the kit itself. I mean, it's a fairly straightforward kit. You got two main body parts, four tail parts. You got eight finger legs, whatever you want to call them, and eight fingernails, Lee press-on. <laughs> and that's really all there is to it. It's going to be a straightforward build for the most part. It's just going to be reshaping because I don't want to, you know, the kit also came with this instructions. Make it look like this. That's it. That's the instructions. Um, I am not going to make it look like this. I don't like the way these are crossed over. Maybe I'll still keep that, but I don't want the finger legs, whatever you call them. I don't want them straight out and the tails. It's really bugging me, so I'm going to try to find a way. I mean, I know a way to do it. I just don't know if I'm going to, which method I'm going to use. I'm going to try to give the tail a little bit of a curve. And I might make a, I say a little diorama. This will be a big diorama. I may try to build a base for it and then put an egg and have them kind of on the egg. I don't know. That's future down the line. So let's look at the, the parts themselves. I mean, the details are pretty good. I mean, we're not going to sit here and look at every piece. Um, all four fingers look pretty much, or all eight, I should say, uh, look pretty much identical, you know. Little little nuances here and there that are different. Uh, the main body. Look at that. What is that? That's fucking filthy. HR Geiger. God damn. Um, but the details are really great on this thing. Now, as you can see, I've already started to cut some of the flash away. And start fitting this. I got flash to cut off of this too. And start the preliminary fits. And regardless of what I do, I'm going to have to fill in a lot of seams on this anyway. And that's fine. Um, the only other problem I'm coming up with is I can make this side look great. And then this side's all screwy. Actually, it's not that bad. I just have to fill a little here. Or I can make this side look great. And this side's all screwy. So I'm going to start with just gluing the bottom. And making it nice and tight like that. And I might even fill the seams in first before I even bother up here. That way this is nice and solid. So if I have to manipulate this, this will not, there's less chance of this cracking apart from each other. So I'm not going to do a lot of this stuff on camera. Um, you know how to glue plastic together. Uh, I think I'll just show you it in stages and then talk about what I feel like doing at that point. But I can't wait to get this thing going. This thing is going to be sexy when it's, it's going to be fucking huge. You know what? Let me mock it up so you can see exactly how big this thing's going to be. I wasn't even able to get the thing to fit on the table straight. Um, <laughs> holy God. You know what? Let me do some, some measurement here real quick. Do I have a tape measure? Tape measure around? Right, we'll do this fair. We'll do it at the, the seam lines. The tail alone. The tail alone. I'll get my girlfriend's tape measure because I don't want to use a manly one. It's 32, 32 inches, almost three feet. That's just the tail. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, all right, so enough of that nonsense. It's big. We get it. Okay, move on. Um, you know, and like I said, it's not going to be much of a tutorial. I'm just going to put the thing together. And in between each stage, maybe film a little bit and talk about whatever. Uh, if there's something specific I need to, to touch on, then, of course, we will. But... It's just going to be more documentation of getting this thing put together. And then uh, when we get to the paint, that's when it's going to be, you know, with most projects, that's when it's going to be the most interesting and most fun. Glue and plastic together is fun, but not really. I mean, it is what it is. Getting shit to fit together um, can be a struggle and can be fun. But 
It's the paint. It's when everything starts to come to life that I love. So I'm going to start working on this thing. And, uh, yeah, and then just show you my progress as we go. So I got it all glued up on this side here, mainly where they touch each other at these two points. Yes, there is glue running all the way around, but there's a few little tiny spots where it's not touching. But that's okay. When I fill it with uh, plumber's epoxy, that'll remedy that. So I have these uh, rubber bands on here as a pseudo clamp. Um, the super glue is not the, the, the best super glue. It works really well, but um, I have better super glue on its way to me. I prefer Gorilla Super Glue for projects like this because it bites onto the vinyl. It's flexible enough when it's uh, cured, whereas just plain old CA glue is, is a, it's fragile. It's, it's brittle. It's strong, but it will crack easily and, it, and crumble and all that crap. But long story short, I prefer the Gorilla Super Glue. So we got all that. I'm pretty sure I have just enough plumber's epoxy to fill all this stuff to fill all this once I get these down. And there's a couple of gaps on the sides. There we go, right there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to fill this probably here in about a half hour. I'm going to let the glue set up, um, fill all that. And then I'm going to let the plumber's epoxy sit maybe for the rest of the day and just call it that for the afternoon. Um, that way it's nice and strong and it's less likely to separate when I start manipulating these down. It's not really going to be a lot of pressure I'm going to use heat, and I'm just going to work it slowly until it looks nice, and then I'll glue it, and then I'll do the same for this side, and I'll try to do a little bit here, but I think this is mostly going to be fill. Um, this and this will meet up. I've already force-fitted it a few times before super gluing, so they will meet, and they will look good. Uh, it's just this part right here just doesn't want to, you know, and I want it to have that kind of curved look to it, so. And then we're going to worry about the uh, the fingers, the feet, the legs, whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to keep calling them fingers. So so let me let this sit, and I'll start working with the plumber's epoxy, and we'll come back. So uh, I got the seams filled up pretty well. I even had enough, a little bit left over, where I could get into there. Um, so I'm happy so far, and I got plenty more. So when it comes time to doing this, um, but I'm going to wait a little bit. But you know what? I figure since... Might as well teach you something if you don't know this stuff already. So this is basically plumber's epoxy. I've talked about it. It comes in a roll. There's usually, you can't tell, there's two colors. There's a dark gray and a light gray. Sometimes it's white and black. Sometimes it's blue and white. And you basically cut a little bit off. What I like to do is knead it into a snake and then fold it over on itself. Knead it into a snake and then just keep doing that. And then you want to make a one uniform color. You don't have a lot of time to work with this stuff. Maybe four or five minutes once it's fully um, mixed. But you have enough time to play around with it. So in little areas like this, I don't sit there and worry about getting it in perfectly. What I'll do is I'll hold the prop, like, like this right here is a good example. And I'll literally just drop it kind of in the way. I got a couple of toothpicks here. Um, you'll notice, let's see if I can't. One end's pointy and one end's blunt. I'll, I'll sand that down real quick before I get started. And that way I have a little tool to stuff it into where it needs to go with the blunt end, and then I can use the pointy end to just kind of, you know, clean up the edges. The pointy end worked really well right there, getting it right into that little crevice there. So, yeah, I figured what the heck. I mean, you know, you know how to glue stuff together. You know how to stuff holes. I figured I'd show you one of my techniques uh, with this stuff. I really need to stop using this plumber's epoxy. I need to get me the, the, the straight-up real-deal model modeling a b epoxy putty um i'm hearing that stuff's awesome and i've yet to actually truly work with it i've always just used the stuff that you, know, you can buy at home depot your local uh hardware store because it's readily available so uh, i'm gonna let that cure probably for a handful of hours then i'll do the top here probably do the exact same thing glue then fill and uh we might call it a a day with this one for for now um but i'm gonna leave it as is I'm going to sit on the table, and I got a couple of little girls I need to go pick up from dance class, so. All right, guys. Well, the two parts are now one. They have been mated, and uh, I'm actually really pleasantly surprised that my plan turned out as well, if not better, than I initially planned. <laughs> um, I was right. Just to uh, secure this and then fill it, 
you know, make sure that's one solid piece and let it sit for a little bit so it cures. So I could fight with this side, but I didn't really have to fight with it at all. Just a little hot water on this and this. One at a time, I brought this down, and I'm actually surprised that it's right where it needs to be. This one, maybe not so much, but a lot better than I thought. And then I just used a hairdryer for this one because I didn't want water getting trapped inside the piece. So, um, I had a little bit of filling. I'm surprised I was able to get this to line up. I really thought there was going to be this weird thing here that would have driven me nuts. But either way, if things go right, I'm going to display it this way anyway, like it's coming at you. So I still have to think about that. But this is where I'm going to leave you guys for the day. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Next video, we'll start fingering it, you know. <laughs> Get it? Because that's vulgar. That looks vulgar. <laughs> All right. Didn't mean to turn this into a sex head thing. But, yeah, guys, next, next video, we'll start working with this, and then we'll figure out how and what we're going to do with the tail. I know I want to curl it. In which position, I don't know. So, guys, thanks as always for watching. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All feedback to me is positive. Leave a comment. Or don't. <laughs> I don't care. But can't say it enough, guys. Thanks as always for watching. Go ahead and leave feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All feedback is positive. Until next time, take care. And bye-bye.